Hello guys and welcome back. So in this new Jpack Compose project series, we are going to create an audio media player from scratch using Media Browser Service Compact APIs. So this is what we are going to build here. As you can see here, we are going to have a list of audio which are going to arise from our device. So we can easily just select anything which we want here and it's going to play up. So and it's going to automatically play to the next item here without changing it. And also we can just easily pause here. We can control this. We can skip to the next item here and play. And we can use this sick bar here, for example, to rewind this, or we can just forward this to a certain position. And also we can collapse this. And also here we have the notification manager, which is going to help us to control the playback. So we can just pause here. We can just click and also we can just go to the next item and even if we go outside our application as you can see here we can just easily check this and we can just use them we can pause here and we can click this to go back to our media player item here so guys without further ado let's get started okay now before we start here you have just to get the initial project from the github repository which i have just linked down in the description box below so i have added several things here for example i have added these colors here and also inside here the theme i have changed this to take up this style here and also you can just come here to the build.gradle file and you can see i have added several things here so go and get this and you are just good to go okay now let's speak about the architecture of our application and how we can just implement this audio player okay so this is going to be our architecture of our application and as you can see here at the two endpoints we have the ui and the player so we have things which are going to help us to manage the player and also to sync with the ui and in order to do this we have to Im implement two things the media controller and the media session so the media session here contains the information about the playback state and other things so for example the metadata and other things about our playback and also the media controller is going to help us to control for example the player if we want to play it or pause or do anything else and for this case here we have to issue controller calls and this one are just going to go directly from the ui to the media controller and the media controller is going to talk to the media session and not directly to the player and we're going to see why this is going to be important and also we have the session callbacks which are going to be implemented by the media controller which is going to help to control the playback state and after that, this media session is going to tell the player, for example, to play or pause an audio. And for that case, it's going to return the data to the controller callbacks by telling it, for example, if the state has changed by using the media session keys. And after that, then we are just going to update the UI. And for this case here, we are going to stay in sync with the player state and as you can see here also we can easily implement another controller from another application so for example the system ui is going to issue controls for example to pause the player or to play another music or another audio and for this case here we have not implemented this ui but the system ui offers this this ui which is going to help to control this and it's going to directly talk to the media session and not the ui and for this case here we are just going to stay in sync so for example if the system is going to control this so a user is going to control outside of our application also this state can easily be updated inside our ui here and also we could have here another thing which is going to be the notification manager for example and the notification manager is going to talk directly to this media session here and also it can control the player and this one is going to be directly reflected here to our ui and this architecture is just recommended to implement inside audio player applications so now let's see how we can implement this architecture inside our application Okay, now let's start here by creating a new package inside here, our audio player. We can just come here and create our package and we can just call this data. And inside here now we can create another package and then we are just going to call this model. And inside here now we can create our model class which is going to represent our audio. And now inside here we can just create our data. So we have here, for example, we want to get the URI. Okay, so these are just all of the information which we want to play our audio. So now here, let's implement a source which is going to help us to get this audio data. 
and you can have here a source for for example you're just fetching them from an api or from your server so for our case here we are just going to get them from the using the content resolver to get the data so we're just going to get this data locally where it's going to be arising from the user data and for this case let's create here a new coding class or file and this one we are just going to call this content resolver so this one is going to help us get the data by using the content resolver and we can just inject this and here now we can just get the application context okay so basically here we're just getting this context from the dagger health so it's going to automatically inject this context which we are going to use it so if you don't know what is a content resolver, so a content resolver is an application component inside Android, which is going to help us to talk to the another database which we do not own. So for example, if we have a contract, a contact database, which is arising from the user phone and not inside our application, when we want to query that information, we have to use the content resolver in order to talk to the contract provider, which is provided by the, the contract application and then give us that information. So this one is just like a generic SQL statement, which we're just going to write here in order to get this data. Now for our case, we're just writing this to get the music data, which is just stored inside these other databases, which we do not own. Okay, now let's create here variables which are going to help us to get the data. So for our case here, we're just going to define here the CASA. So we have the MCASA. So the CASA is just the data which is going to be returned when we query this database. And this just represents something in a tabular format with the rows and columns. So we can just easily access these rows and individual columns. And for that case here now, let's create a uh, things which we want to select. And for this case, we can just provide here a projection. And here we have the media store containing all of the information. So we can just use this media store and we can call here our audio. And basically here now we can get the audio columns and we can select anything which we want. So for our case here, we're just going to get if this one is going to be the display name. And for that case also, we can just use the media store. So these are just the information which we're going to select. So these are all of the columns which we want to select here. And for that case, now we can just easily get our data. Now let's create here a little room. And for that case, now we have to provide a selection clause. So if you want to filter our database, so we can just filter by using this selection clause. And inside here, now we can use the media store. So we want to filter this by using the audios and we can check if this one is going to be is music. Now here we want to check with something. So we are just going to pass in here a question mark. So this is just a recommended way of passing here selection clause. So instead of just passing here a data, so for example, if we allow the user to search, so for example, we want to filter this database by using this search term here. When you provide this search term directly here to the user, they can insert, for example, a SQL statement like drop table, which is going to drop the table. So this one is going to help you to, to prevent those SQL injection attacks. And for our case here, now we can just pass in here the selection argument. So we can just call here. And here we want to pass in here that thing, which is going to be replaced by this question mark here. And for our case, we can just pass in here one, which is going to filter if this one is going to be music. And for that case, now we can just sort here our data. And we can just sort this to be ascending. So we want to ascend our data. Okay, now let's define here functions which are going to help us to get the data. And for our case here, now we can just create a function. And this one is going to return a list of audio. And we can denote this to be coming to the worker thread so that it can be executed inside the worker thread because this one is just an SQL statement. So it can take a lot of time to execute it. And now here we can just create a private function that is going to help us to fetch this data.
Okay, now here we want to return this data, so we can just create here an audio list. So here we have our audio list. Now we can try to initialize here our cursor. So we can just get this cursor and we can use the context in order to query the database. And here we just get the access to the content resolver. And this content resolver here now we can easily query the database. And here basically now we can pass in the URI. So for our case here we can just use the media store and we can just call the audio. And we can use this external content to URI in order to get this data. And for this case here, now we can just pass in the projection and which is just the columns which we want to select. And here we can pass in the selection clause. So you pass in here a selection clause and here now we can pass in a selection argument. And for that case here, now we can just pass in here the sort order. So basically here now we have our cursor to get the data. Okay, now we have here our cursor. Now let's get the individual data here from our cursor. So we can just create here a lead. And we can just come here and call this mcursor. And now basically here we can just get the index of these columns. So for example here we can just get the id column. And we can use this get column index or throw. And here basically we can just pass in to be a not nullable. And for that case here, now we can just pass in here the media store item which we want to select. And for our case here, we can just use this media store dot audio, audio columns, and we can just select the ID. So basically here now we have our ID column. And here now we can just change this to other columns which we want to select. And for our case here, we have the display name. Okay, so basically here we have our indexed column. So here we are just using this get column index or throw. So if this index is not going to be available or this item is not going to be available, then it's going just to throw an, uh, an exception. So for case, when we have all of this data, now we can just use the cursor here. Okay, so now here we can check if this cursor is going to have the data. So we can just come here and we can just call count and we just want to see if this cursor is going to be empty now for case here we can just log an error here and basically here we're just going to get the error that our cursor is just going to be empty now else here our cursor has the data and because here if the cursor is just going to be zero so there is no data which we have now we can just use here a a while so that we can just loop throughout this cursor and get the individual columns and rows so for our case here now we can just apply this cursor let move next and this one is just going to move to the next item now here we want to get the individual rows because we are just going to be looping around through all of the items which are going to be available now we can just call the display name and here now we can just call the get string here and we can pass in here the display name column which we have just obtained above there and also we can just do to the rest of the items so here we're just going to get the id and here the id is going to be long so we can just call get long and here we can just call the id So here we want to get the URI, so we can just call this URI here. And for the case of URI, we are just going to use the content URIs. And here we can just pass in with appended ID. So we want to add the ID to get the individual item here. Now we can just use the media store. And we can pass in here the external content URI and we can just pass in the ID of each individual item. And for that case here, now we can just add our audio data. And now here we can just pass in here our data. And for this case here, we have all the data, the URI, the display name and ID and title. And for that case, now we can just come here and return our data. 
and we can just get here our data and return this we can just call here get audio that get cursor data here and we can just easily return here our data and here we have just pass in the audio but we want the audio from our application and for that case here we have finished to create our content resolver so so far here what we have done we have just used here a cursor in order to get the data and here we have used the projection to select the columns which we want and here we have just filtered our data by using this selection clause and selection argument and here we have sort our data and here we have just get our data by querying the database by using the context content resolver and get the data and after that we use this cursor here to get the index and after that we get our index which we just call here if our cursor is just not going to be null then we just going to move to get all of this data inside a single item and here we just get the individual rows and after that we just create an audio list which we are just going to return inside here our get audio data so far so good so we have here our data fetched now we have to create a repository that is going to help us to provide this data to other components and we can just come here inside our data and create a new package here and we can just call this repository and for this case here now we can just create here a new coding class or file and here we can just call our repository and for this case here now we can just inject here to get the content resolver So basically here because the content resolver we have just injected it here by using dagger hit so dagger will know how to create this class here and that's why we are just going to pass it here and not construct it worrying about constructing it. And now for that case here we can just create here a suspend function that is going to call us to get the audio data. And this one is just going to return a list of audio data and basically here now we can use with context and here basically we can pass in a dispatcher which is going to call this inside the io dispatcher so here's just going to switch the thread from the main thread to the io dispatcher and basically here now we can just call the content resolver so this one is just going to fetch the data from the io dispatcher which is just going to go to another thread and after that we just do not worry about the ui thread being overworked Okay, so now we have our audio data. Now let's focus to the media part. And now inside here we can just create a new package and we are just going to call this media. And inside here our media we can just create a new package and this package here is going to contain the constants because we have a lot of constants which we want to use them. So we can just call this constants. Okay, now let's create here new coding class or file and this one's just going to be object and here we can pass any type of name so for case we're just passing here to be k and for that case here now we can just pass in here several variables and for case we're just going to pass in here a constant val and here we want to call this playback notification id so here we have our notification channel id so this one is going to be used by the notification manager so you can type anything else here which you want and for our case here now we want to pass in the notification channel id and also we want to pass in here the root media id which is going to be used by the media browser and basically here also you can just pass anything else so for our case here now we have our media root id and also we can just add here the custom actions constant which we are just going to create here so we can just add here the start media playback action and here we can just refresh and here we want to the update playback update information so we can just pass in here the interval okay so basically here we have this constant which we are going to use them when we create our service so don't worry about where are we going to use them for now we we are just going to use them inside our service so for that case here we have our constants now let's create here another package 
and this one is going to be the package of the service okay now let's create here a new coding class or file and here we are just going to create a class and we are just going to call this media player service so this media player service is just going to inherit from the media browser service compact And this media browser service compact requires us to implement two method, the on get root and the on load children. So this class is the entry point for browsing and playback commands from the apps UI. And we can allow even other apps that wishes to play music via our app. So for example, an Android Auto or the Google Assistant to control our playback. So the browsing begins with the method music on get root and it continues to the music dot on load children callback so we have here to method this one on get root which is going to link up with the activity so our service is just going to be a like a server client setup so we have here our media player service which is going to be a server and this one is just going to start from the on get root and here we are just going to return the root And basically here now we can just use the constant which we have created, which is just the media root ID. And here we can just pass in null. So inside this browse root here, we can just check up if, if this user is going to be, for example, allowed to browse our root. So here, this method here, we can just perform to check the, the user. But for our case, we're just returning. Anyone can easily access this. So if you want, for example, to limit a type of user or if the user is not, for example, registered or anything else, then you can just restrict them here to not browse the root. However, this method here is required to return really fast. So any other logic must be implemented inside this onload children here. And we are just going to see how we can just load these children here. Now, for our case here, we can just come here to the manifest file in order to add this Android media player service here to be recognized. Now we can just come here below our activity here and we can just declare here our service. And here we have our media browser service and we can just easily add here our service tag here. And basically here we want to pass in Android export. So we can just pass in is exported this one to be to false. And also we have to declare here an intent filter. So you must pass in here the name, which is just not going to be showing up in autocomplete. So we have this Android media browser dot media browser service. So you have just to implement this intent filter here in order for the media browser service to work. Now for this case here, we have just finished to register here inside our media player service. So in the next videos, we are just going to speak in detail on this method here on media player service. Now we have just to link up the, so for now here, we have to link up the dagger hilt here in order to make it to function correctly. So we can just add here at Android entry point in order to mark this to be an entry point because we are just going to use these functions which we are going to be injecting. And also we can just come here to our main activity and also we can just add here at Android entry point. Now here, what we have to do, we can just come here and add our application function. So we can just call here our audio application. And this one is just going to inherit from the application class. And with dagger hilt here, we can just, we can just annotate this with hilt Android app. And this one is just going to bring those code generations. So for our case here, we can just collapse this. And for now, let's try here to build the application and see if we don't have any errors. So our application has built successfully. So we are just good to go. So guys, let's leave it here for this video. So in the next video, we'll deal with setting up the service modules. So if you like this series, give it a thumbs up for the algorithm. And if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye bye for now.